suppose you're thirsty. Come on, let's go and get a drink. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And here we are, day one of rebuilding Tyne Dock Station. Um, yes, I mean, for the time when I started building the railway, it served a purpose. It was quick to put together and um, yeah and it served as well over the last eight years and um, it's time to do it properly um, I'm going to try and salvage as much as possible I'm going to try and hopefully keep the platforms because they may come in useful um, I know I won't use them again and I'll definitely not be using the buildings again maybe uh, the gents will probably be the only building uh, I'll use but um, the other buildings, the main buildings on platform 1 and 2 I'll not be using them again or the little uh, hut that we got there on platform 1 but um, yeah if I can try and salvage them I will so First things first, got to turn off all the electrics and, um, and have a go at taking what I can take apart before we start taking the track apart. I want to get both platforms up off of the um, baseboard before I tackle the track. I'm going to try and salvage some of the track as well. I have got a new track and I have got one new point for up this end because as you'll see in the drawer in a minute I've got to take this point out and put in another point which shifts the whole rails that way by about 15 degrees. Um, yeah, let me explain when I show you the drawing. And here's my drawing. Um, as you can see here, the p point needs to go straight after the bridge this way at least 15 degrees because the station was an island platform. Um, I'm still doing research into this uh, station. Um, I always knew it was a, an island platform um, because the entrance for the station was underneath this bridge or in between two bridges that went came up into the platform via an underpass and there was a, another uh, entrance or underpass here where came into a T-junction before it came up into the platform but we'll go into the uh, station in more detail when we come to do the or when we come to make the platform so the focus this week is to dismantle the station and try and reinstall the track work it's, it's all that was a little bit easier than what I thought it would be um, quite straightforward just undone all the cables from the terminal blocks underneath the baseboard and uh, don't that look different without the buildings on um, I removed the signal box as well because uh, at this end just as the two points start this is where the new track more or less straight away splits up into two I want to try and get as big a platform as I can. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. So I cannot remember 
whether that this part was glued or not. And what was glued to that? Um, what we're going to have to see. What I'll do is I'll run a standing knife round this edge uh, all up to this wall because I want to try and keep that wall because that wall will continue right away across to this wall. So this is going. And this road here might be pushed back that way. So yeah, I'll, I'll undo the screws that holds the MDF in place. And I think the only th glue that will be keeping this in, or keeping these platforms in, will be the glue that's gone around the edges. But uh, we shall see. I've just undone the screws underneath platform 2 so I'm just hoping that the platform should just lift straight up because I know I didn't glue it down hmm. I think it's just the glue around the edge is holding it right, let's give it a second go That's not budget. I think it might be a hammer job. Right, let's try this end. Oh, oh, this end's easy. Right, so there goes platform two. Now then, platform one, I'm sure that was glued and screwed here. Um, platform two, there's a little bit of damage um, on the corner here. When I took it out on the, on the track, so from there so there, the track's not going to be any good. But uh, so I've probably got about a meter's worth of track there I could use. Well, platform one was a little bit more stubborn than platform two. I did glue this down. And as you can see, I've lifted a little bit of the board, so I'm going to have to clean that up and fill it. What I'll do at the same time is I'll take these slabs off um, when I come to fill that. Right, so the next step is to remove these signals. Now these are soldered on, so I'm going to have to desolder these and then pull them out. I've got two, one this end and one at the far end. So I'll do, do that next. It's quite straightforward really. Just unplug these cables that go into the top and uh, try not to damage the sensor and uh, yeah take up all the boarding around the signal first we're going to have to remove the redundant siding because the track needs to come over to this side where this siding is so that'll be a good point there if I mark that up to where the tracks should be as you can see there so that's a good marker for putting the track back so it'll start from the edge of that point and then curve into this area so the platform 
we'll be starting just about here where the signal is because we want to at least get the same size platform back into this area if we can. And what a big difference that has made. Um, I've removed the signals from both ends, here and here. And um, I think by moving the station across to roughly where those tracks are, that's where the new platform is going to be, it has really opened up this area for the expresses on the main line, which is those two tracks over there. So it'll be great for uh, future videos. While I'm taking these pins out, I was just thinking to myself, how many times has a train run over these rails? And um, when you think about it, when you build a layout, you just lay the track and then run on the trains. And uh, I was just thinking, I wonder how many times a certain train has run along these rails. Because they are pretty worn. Sort of rounded over on the insides. Eight years of running trains. Now it's all being lifted, all for the greater good. As you can see, I'm salvaging the track pins and I'm just making sure I get every single pin out before I make a start. The last thing you want to do is leave a pin behind when you start lifting the rails so that's when you can cause damage to the track that you want to try and save. Right so I think that's all of them. I shall now give this a soak in with um, some soapy water. So like I said I'm just spraying some soapy water where it's needed. Not a lot, just enough to to soak into the ballast. And it won't take long to soak in. Over to this point there, that's it. So just let that soak in for a little bit, then we can start ripping it up. That's all the track now lifted and as you can see I've been filling in um, any of the holes that were made when the old Tyne Dock Station was there and there was quite a few holes to fill in as you can imagine for all the lampposts and lighting etc. So filled in so I'm just rubbing them back. Um, as you've seen in the drawing um, it's, it's an island platform so I've got to try and get the width of this platform as wide as possible. So uh, I shall finish up um, sanding all this polyfiller back and then we can concentrate on the track work. So now you know what I mean when I said uh, the right hand turnout going into here throws track that way quite a bit uh, it's roughly almost five degrees and uh, by doing that it saves a little bit of curve and um, we get to keep uh, a point in situ um, for crossing over to going into the engine shed so all I'm doing now is just pinning this 
point in place. Um, when laying points, it's best not to try and stretch them to where you want them to go. Just let them lie flat and they'll just go where they need to go in order to lie flat. And from that point to this point through here into the other right hand turner which is existing, it's a nice straight edge. So hopefully we'll get no derailments. Um, as you can see straight away by having the offset curve here really throws open a wide gap for the island platform. Right, we've looked at the Tyne Dock West End, now we're looking at the Tyne Dock East End where we rejoin uh, the tracks leading up to South Shields and the what I call the run around loop which goes back to uh, Newcastle and um, I'm using these Pico Trex, track setters uh, the grey one here is the 30 inch this green one is the 36 inch uh, the 36 inch was too shallow so what I've done here is I've set up this end with the 30 inch and I set up that end where it rejoins the point with the uh, 30 inch track setter and it meets somewhere in the middle so all I've got to do now is mark the two tracks, cut them and then they'll uh, go onto the baseboard and it creates that nice swan neck shape as you can see there as it rejoins the South Shields branch as it were so I thought I'd show you this because it's, it's quite simple um, once I've pinned this end it's just a case of lifting this track up seeing where it marries up with the rails underneath and then just cut it to suit and then join it together and then that's one of the tracks done obviously I've got to do the the upline as it were in a similar way now the track is jointed together you can see I have left a one millimeter gap on both rails and I've done the same over there at that end on the right hand turnout there's about a one millimeter gap there so that's allowing for heat expansion especially up here in the low um, on the upline, um, the swan neck is a little bit less um, uh, of a shallow, as it were, a lot less of an offset compared to this side. So I had to use the 36 inch to get the offset, you know what I mean. But there you go, both rails are in. Um, all I have to do now is add the droppers and then we can start um, testing the rails. Um, salvage wise, when I was trying, <laughs> trying to salvage the old track, that's all I managed to salvage. Um, it was just so well and truly stuck down onto the baseboard. And it's so easy to pull the rails out of these chair, chairs, especially on the Code 75. Another change I've done um, to Tyne Dock is this walling. Um, as you can see, I've got some fresh capping stones on the top edge here. Um, so what I've done is I've reduced the wall by another 15 millimeters. Um, the reason being that the platform used to be up against this wall, and uh, when it was up against this wall. I had the wall higher. Um, it's not needed now, so we've dropped the wall by about uh, five feet. Um, the reason being as well is when we're at this level, we can see right across into the platform. Um, if it was higher, 
you won't see as much detail on the platform but uh, only time will tell and all will be revealed as the build continues right so that's the track work done and it kind of matches the drawing that we did earlier um, to what we've got here and that was the major change really putting in that right hand turnout and creating these swan necks which are going to go around the platform um, yes totally different to what it was uh, a couple of weeks ago um, at the moment I've got a couple of trains running around testing these sections of track work out so the signals are working good so they uh, didn't damage them um, this poor old lamppost here got knocked quite a few times um, but it still works uh, yep so the signal boxes are back um, the only things missing is the station and right on cue here comes the V2 which originally ran on these rails right at the very start when we did time dock first time round now you can see what I mean by dropping the wall if that wall was still as high as it was you wouldn't see into the cab at this level and, uh, here comes the C1 Atlantic coming the other way taking it steady as it goes through the swan neck and back out onto the well the feather signals on so it's going to do the uh, Newcastle and uh, not Newcastle the Newcastle circular and this is the view from the footbridge um, as you can see the both swan necks more or less look the same but they're not the same swan neck in the track on the right is slightly shallower like I mentioned earlier in the in the video but the space between the rails or the tracks is 162 millimeters which is, which is a good size that leaves me 80 millimeters plus for the buildings and uh, possibly 40 millimeters either side for the platforms, platform with one and two. So we have a black blank canvas, and the next thing to do is to look at the platform, how I'm going to do it. Um, although I have done island platforms, they've always been straight, uh, but this is an unusual shape. And uh, when we go into the time dock station itself, it is an unusual shaped platform. And that's something we will talk about in the next video. As you can see on the left, the redundant siding is no more. Because just about here is where the buffer stop was. And now that's gone to allow the actual space needed for the station um, I have looked at trying to get a hold of some photographs of Time Dock Station and um, they are very very rare indeed but we'll have to see what I can come up with but I want to try and keep uh, as many original features of Time Dock Station as I possibly can.
Right, I think we've come to the end of the video. Um, I think that's as far as I can go this week. The track's down. The signals are working, so I didn't my, didn't break any of them, which is good. Uh, I've still got a point motor to wire up on the right-hand turnout that I've just installed. And uh, once that's done, we're good to go with the platform and the station building. Still a bit more research to do. Um, if any more photographs come up, uh, great, because uh, basically I am lacking uh, Tyne Dock Station, the B BR Station photographs. But uh, I'm sure with what I've got, I can put together a, a drawing and maybe make something. But until next time, everybody, take care and we'll see you again soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye.